two-thirds of our planet is covered by water, but in this vast expanse there isn't much fresh water. The global freshwater reserves make up only 3% of the total amount, and they are distributed quite unevenly. Many countries are fortunate to have plenty of rivers and lakes, and they can hardly imagine experiencing a shortage of fresh water. However, for some countries, this is a serious problem. They are trying to solve it in different ways. Perhaps the most ambitious project was undertaken by Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. His amazing creation is known as the Great Man-Made River. Today, we will tell you about this incredible mega project. Enjoy watching. Ninety percent of Libya is covered by deserts. There is hardly any rainfall, and due to the high air temperature, moisture quickly evaporates. In the middle of the 20th century, Libyans were searching for oil in the Sahara, but instead they stumbled upon something equally valuable to them. Back in 1953, geologists didn't even realize the treasure they had discovered. It was the Nubian Aquifer, formed during the last ice age, when the Sahara was a fertile savanna with frequent precipitation. The Nubian Aquifer contains about 150,000 cubic kilometers of groundwater, an incredibly gigantic figure. The water under the sands of the Sahara is more than all the freshwater lakes on the planet combined, including Lake Baikal. It is the largest underground source of freshwater on the planet. The Nubian Aquifer covers an area of more than 2 million square kilometers, roughly one-fifth of the size of the United States. This underground oasis spans the territories of four countries. Sudan, Chad, Egypt, and Libya. In the 1960s, the first thoughts appeared on the construction of a giant irrigation system. Muammar Gaddafi initiated an extensive construction project. The Libyan leader aimed to extract water from underground and transport it to the northern cities of the country. According to the most optimistic estimates, the discovered reserve should be sufficient for 4,800 years, if up to 1.5 billion cubic meters of water are extracted annually. The implementation of the project was divided into five stages. In the first stage, a factory was built to manufacture huge 80-ton pipes that could serve as tunnels for vehicles. In total, more than half a million pipes with a diameter of four meters were produced. The main part of the pipeline was constructed using these pipes. To bring the great man-made river to the country, employees of leading foreign companies arrived. Among them were Americans, Japanese, and Germans but the majority of the first phase was carried out by specialists from South Korea. Concrete pipes were transported along specially constructed roads with a total length of over three and a half thousand kilometers. These roads were designed to accommodate heavy machinery without any issues. Additionally, the first stage included the construction of a 1,200 kilometer long pipeline. Huge trenches were excavated for laying the pipes, as the water network had to be situated at depths of up to six meters. Approximately 85 million cubic meters of soil were moved in total. The cost of the first phase of the project amounted to nearly $5 billion. In the second stage, which began in 1989, the water pipeline was extended to Tripoli, the largest city and capital of Libya, to provide it and its neighboring territories with a daily water supply of 1 million cubic meters. In the third stage, a connection was established between the Kufra and Benghazi OECs, the second largest city in the country, the plan for the last two stages involved constructing a branch to the city of Tobruk and connecting all these branches into a unified system near the city of Sirte. This resulted in a huge system of pipes, aqueducts, and reservoirs. In total, more than 1,300 wells were drilled, with a significant part of them being deeper than 500 meters. Many of the planned sections became operational. The gigantic pipeline stretched for more than 3,000 kilometers and began transporting water from four main underground aquifers in the south of Libya to the northern population centers. By the beginning of the Civil War in 2011, three out of five stages had been completed, and work had started on the fourth stage. With the help of the Great Man-Made River, Libyans managed to supply 6.5 million cubic meters of fresh water to cities and settlements, providing it to 4.5 million people. 70% of its usage was allocated for agriculture, Thanks to the project, large farms were established in the country, where wheat, barley, vegetables, and citrus fruits were cultivated. In reality, the project was initially conceived not only to provide water for the population, but also to reduce dependence on imported products. Additionally, it helped to expand green areas in the north and west of the country, which helped prevent further desertification. 
the large-scale construction came at a significant cost to Libya. According to various sources, the total cost of the project would have been about $24 billion, with most of the plan already implemented, and the completion of the project was scheduled for approximately 2015. Libya managed to get by on its own, raising funds through taxes on tobacco and fuel, as well as revenues from oil sales. However, the true cost to the local population remains a mystery that we may never fully uncover, as many political analysts refer to Gaddafi as a bloody tyrant and his regime in the West was seen as a source of international terrorism. But there is another perspective. Some considered him a talented politician and a virtuoso leader who did much for ordinary Libyans, but we will leave it to historians to reflect on Colonel Gaddafi's personality. As early as the third stage of construction in 2008, the great man-made river was entered into the Guinness World Records as the world's largest irrigation complex. Western media reluctantly covered this project even though its scale remains unmatched. Consider just the expenses for producing the pipes. For every 7.5 meter long pipe, eight kilometers of carbonized metal wire were required. The total length of this wire would be enough to encircle the earth 230 times. The stones and sand used in making these pipes would be enough to build 16 pyramids in Giza. The cement used in the project could have paved a highway from Tripoli to Finland and continued on to Sweden. Libyans managed to create an engineering marvel with which they could irrigate thousands of hectares of land and transform the region literally before their eyes. But in 2011, construction came to a halt. The escalating civil war and the military intervention by an international coalition threatened Libya's existence as a unified state. In the autumn of 2011, Muammar Gaddafi, who had effectively ruled Libya for over 40 years, was captured by rebels. He faced a brutal, swift trial and was subsequently killed. After his death, the country descended into chaos and there was little room for irrigation projects. The war caused damage to the sections that had already been constructed. NATO forces in particular bombed them and uncontrolled groups added to the destruction. NATO troops also bombed the pipe manufacturing plant, claiming that it supposedly stored military equipment, including rocket artillery systems, even local residents dismantled some facilities to sell. In recent years, the press has often reported on the shortage of drinking water in Libya. Periodically, it is used as a tool in the struggle for influence by various political forces, and ordinary people suffer as a result. Unfortunately, due to neglect, lack of technical maintenance for stations, and armed attacks, the water pipeline infrastructure is being destroyed. The great man-made river is gradually losing its grandeur. What was built by people is perishing due to their own activities. According to experts, if the project had been fully realized and had no obstacles to its uninterrupted operation, North Africa could have become the world's breadbasket. When this will happen is unknown, and whether it will happen at all remains uncertain. As of 2023, this great global irrigation system is in a dire state, much like all of Libya. Three years after Gaddafi's assassination, another civil war broke out in the country, lasting for six years. Today, the political situation in Libya remains unstable and the living standards of its citizens are getting worse every day. Write in the comments what you think about this crazy mega project. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.